What up, guys? It's Schwai. We're here on another edition of 10 and 60 with Mr. Buppy. Yo. What up, man? What up, man? Welcome to my room. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Why don't we uh, start off, let everybody know where you're from. Hey, man. From Park City, Utah, originally. Okay. Uh, Salt Lake City sometimes. Kind of bounce around between the two. Right on. Damn it. Do you still sleep with a stuffed animal? Uh, no, but I have this one back here. What's he his lurks name? in the shadows. I don't have a name. I got this shit in 2009, so I was okay. six. And uh, he's just cute. He just lurks back there. Hell yeah, bro! You just ate. You just aged me with that. I feel I know, so old right? now. <laughs> six and two. I think I was, I was like halfway through high school. I know it's pretty crazy. Fuck, dude. Um, what was your very first memory? Uh, ever. Ever. Wow. Probably. Uh, Oddly enough, I was, like, involved in this, like, car crash that wasn't terrible, but I was, like, young. I was, like, four. And I remember it so vividly. Mm. And I think that's probably the, the first, like, super coherent memory that comes to mind. Because I was young. I was, like, four. And I remember yeah. Every I feel like that's when it detail starts. detail of that. Every detail. Damn, so. that's crazy, bro. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times people think they have memories, but they just, like, remember seeing pictures. And then they create a memory. They're like, oh, I remember that. But This nah. is deep. This is, yeah. Like, this is, like... You're, you're deep right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'm glad that you're still here. I Shit. know. Yeah. Four-year-old me. It was really... I got driven to preschool in a fire truck that day. Shit. It was crazy. Crazy vibes. All right. Still Next went. question. What is your biggest insecurity? Oh. Probably my room, man. We're sitting in it. So really yeah like Why? i feel like i should have this big fat fucking pad you know <laughs> and i don't it's like fits like five people max so it's all good know. bro you got no, a roof on your head i don't know I, for a lot of it was my voice you know and singing and all that and that's why i think i didn't want to be on stage for a long time because mm. i was just sitting there like worried about not being trained or classically trained or whatever the fuck that means nowadays but yeah i feel like those those two things all right i right don't and if you could describe yourself in one word, Whoa. what would it be? Uh, pride. Dedicated, I'd say. Dedicated okay. to, to most things that I do if I want to get something done. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love that. Do you have a favorite cartoon? Yeah, I like Hey Arnold a lot. That was my Hell shit. Yeah. And I was even like outside of that time period a little bit, but it still came on. Like, it would Bro. Come on, on, uh, there's what, what is that? Is that Nick or is that? Yeah, it's Nick. Yeah, it's Nick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Bro, Hey Arnold I, was a shit. Yeah, bro. Amazing show. Football head. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, reading this thing. One, it was like I think it was like on like a BuzzFeed or some shit like that. But there was this whole thing about how the writers basically put in all these like hidden, like sexual innuendos in the show in and hey in Hey Arnold. Yeah. And like there was a whole study about how they like basically took all these free frame freeze frames and they would like outline certain things. And it was like it was something like scandalous hey shit. Arnold, Look it up. I mean, all those people who write those shows got to be yeah dogs. twisted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, I, I like watch stuff today and i'm just like bro like i was watching yeah, this when I was a kid, but you have crazy. a whole new meaning you go look it. back it's fun yeah, <laughs> shit in there yeah bro people high off their ass <laughs> on, like jellyfish and you're like what the fuck it's amazing um what's your favorite smell um i love pine like pine okay. anything is good. forest shit pine yeah all right and my dog bro my dog even when he'd be smelling bad i'm like that's the best smelling thing ever i don't know She's i feel that though because my dog has this smell like in her neck and i'm just like bro like i don't know why but i love that smell yeah, it's, just dog it's like smell. comforting dog yeah it's just a dog um what's your biggest pet peeve um when people don't like close doors that pisses me off a lot mm. um when people don't make like if like you sleep in my bed and you like don't make it like pisses me off really bad like people just don't make beds i don't know nah, you leave your bed bro, made, I, feel I hate you like, 100%. I, you, you don't deserve air but uh <laughs> i was reading uh, this thing how like if you make your bed the very first thing in the morning like that's like it starts your day off on the right huge, foot because it's a task you just did a mindset task change yeah. yeah no that and i yeah i guess people who like 
I don't know. Just people get irritated at small shit too. It's, I guess it's like too general of a pet peeve, but no, people I feel just get you, mad bro. for no reason. The bed's a sanctuary, bro. <laughs> you gotta have that like on fleek. Um, what does happiness mean to you? Um, funny enough, I did a TED talk on this one time, like a full TEDx, mm. fifteen minute talk. It's, it's hidden, on, it. hidden on the internet, dude. Find it. Find the video. <laughs> Edward Kingston. Search it up. All right. Um, but no, happiness to me is just like being around the people I love and the friends I love. And um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a feeling, but I think it's also a, a thing that you like constantly strive mm-hmm. towards and have to strive towards. And like you don't put, uh, I guess a lot of people just feel like happiness comes to them. And for me, I think it's always has to be worked for, you know, in a way. Um, and even the things that bring me happiness, like I've been working towards those things for so fucking long. So it's totally, like, bro. Yeah, it's a constant journey, man. Yeah. Um, great answer, man. Uh, Thanks, man. Who's your biggest musical influence? Um, it definitely changes from time to time. Um, I got into it because I was listening to like a lot of Little Peep, but then at the same time I was listening to a lot of like Odd Future, which is like completely mm-hmm. separate. Um. And then, you know, my sister makes music and I moved out here because she was out here and I was like, that looks awesome. And so I did that. And so that's definitely a big inspo. Um, but yeah, sonically nowadays, um, I would say, I mean, it's weird. Like I started really influenced from Gene Dawson and that what's kind of got me into like this He's incredible. weirder pop, like left of center pop stuff, but I sound nothing, you know, nothing like him. And uh, I think he definitely inspired me, but um, to, to go more left of center, but yeah, it's, it's weird. I have so many different influences all over the place and like even the Bahamas, which are just like, mm. he's just a dude with a guitar, you know, like yeah. just, you know, even that, like I listen to him and I'm like, here's how I could use that. No one really gets how I'm influenced by him, but you know, like the leads of some of the stuff that we do and, um, just simplifying everything, you know, just making Hell everything yeah. simple. I've, I haven't heard anyone bring Bahamas up. So <laughs> exactly. Incredible. Um, what's your favorite snack? Um, probably like, well, like if I need a quick eat, I'll just like make like, there's just like stag, like canned chili. I'll just throw it in wow. a bowl. It takes like, two minutes. Okay. Easy, quick, good <laughs> snack. Uh, but I like those nature Valley oat and honey bars like, a right. lot. Like there those little oat things, green ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fucking good. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Uh, shit. I like the invisibility thing, but I also like the mind reading thing. Okay. That's always been my, I like the mind reading and the invisibility. One of the two. I, I can't really choose. I don't know. I'll probably fly if I could do that. Just get fly. anywhere, teleport. Flying would be cool, but I feel like the logistically flying, like, can you still get hurt? Because, like, there's probably still, like, a fuck ton of, uh, Shit, the yeah. landing, the <laughs> birds, the fucking airplane. Like you gotta get in the no fly zones, cause then you get hit by a fucking jet. No, uh, I feel that, bro. Superpowers would be lit, though. <laughs> um, if you could time travel, yeah, where would you go? Like Hollywood in the nineties, okay. like just to like sunset in Hollywood, like just watch like. You know, everyone just play a different bar each week and like. Bro, it must have been a wild west. It's like, fucking weird. Completely different now. Oh yeah, it's a whole different place now. But yeah, back then, I mean, it seemed so cool. I feel that, bro. I always think about like what it would be like to not have any phones, internet, none of that shit. Like, yeah, it was like, bro, we, this is the plan on Friday night. <laughs> Y'all this better pull up. Mail. What a uh, what's your biggest fear? Uh, <laughs> my biggest fear is uh, probably like um, I always get worried when I go on stage like I had this one show like long ago where I played in front of like 200 people and, and I was like younger I was like 16 and I got up there and I got like two songs in and just like sound didn't work I was forgetting lyrics like the one I would get lyrics right like the sound would fucking stop working I was like at a certain point I just cut the fucking thing the songs <laughs> in and that was like the worst moment of my life so I think my biggest fear is repeating that but scaled up like 10 times and oh, just being in front that. of like 30,000 people and just like fucking the set it's not a mistake I mean it's not a fuck up until you let other people know uh, yeah no up, you have to very you know? clearly and I did I was like hey guys I definitely fucked up cause once you re- <laughs> once you let them know that you fucked up you fucked up yeah no. but they're not they don't know but I, like 
I've had bad, you know, I've switched verses on songs and yeah. kept going. But I, the, I mean, that was like, I was sitting there like, literally we were like three songs in and the song just cut out <laughs> in the middle of it, you know? It's like, horrible, bro. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, all right, second to last question. Great. What would you do without music? A lot. I, I think I will do without music at some point. Not not as like um maybe stop making music, but um yeah, like I don't I don't plan to like sit on a twelve month tour schedule my whole fucking life. Um, totally. I like volleyball a lot. I like photography a lot. I like design and video edit most of my stuff. So Sick. that stuff. And uh yeah, I think without music like I really like traveling, which is cool because music and traveling kinda go hand in hand in a way. Um but yeah, I'd probably just shit around the world, like figure Pretty out chill, all bro. these random places to go. Yeah. yeah. I have like three passports, so I'm trying to like Oh really? Yeah. Where at? UK, Malta, Europe. Wow. And then the US. Okay. But my Maltese go. one is expired, so I gotta figure that out. World traveler, bro. Yeah, man. That's Sunday. actually super clutch, bro. I know, it's cool. Shout out my dad for being born in the UK, but somehow still getting a Maltese passport. And know. it's pretty easy though, right? Like if you have a parent that has the, another country. Yeah, passport, if, if just it depends on the like, country lot. Honestly, yeah. the US is the hardest to get. Yeah. Everyone else is pretty easy to like yeah. waltz in and be like, hey, my dad's from here, you know? <laughs> but Lit. Um, and last question. If there was like one thing that you learned, whether it's about yourself, about the world, about people around you, whoever, whatever it may be, like from the pandemic and now i've kind of like brought that into your life today what would that be yeah i feel like it's it's definitely been weird um like life is fucking different but i learned during the pandemic that like everyone's lonely as fucking shit at the end of the day and it made me realize that like everyone's uh, a human being like even these like crazy uh i saw phoebe bridgers do a 50 person online concert in a skeleton onesie like <laughs> with a fucking like star like star wars background on this like just random live stream and i was like this, she's just a regular human being yeah just bro. bored as fuck right now <laughs> like she, she has no idea what to do and yeah it made me notice that everyone's going through the same bullshit you know and like at the end of the day every single human being that we like idolize or whatever is just a dude and it's like they just happen you know, to do yeah, cool shit they're just they're just a person and i think definitely i learned that during that time period because they all were like had no idea what the fuck to do for two years you know mm -hmm. everyone so yeah that was interesting but glad it's over glad i'm sitting here, yeah, we're here. shooting some shit yeah hell yeah there you have it folks 10 and 60 buppy yeah.